you should have seen the two of us, gay mother, running around Joanne's fabric like we just discovered gravity. Bright yellow. This is Dijon mustard. <laughs> They're selling beige. Beige. I'm so tired of everything being beige. And this is what Amazon wants us to do. They want us to not return things because they want us to be intimidated. Ryan Murphy needs to be stopped. 12 episodes of Kim Kardashian acting. I don't get it. He's what? gonna Wait. murder me. The guy holding the sign saying Kim Kardashian ruined my life. No. First. It was Pete Davidson. Yes. The drag race finale. We have to re talk about it. Oh. Somebody say rebrand. Hi. Love it. Do you want to do the intro? Co-host? Oh my God. What do I say? Earn that money I'm not paying you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Say hello to the people. Oh my God. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. <gasps> wow. Good job. Thank you. Oh. So obviously, as you know, Kevin is the official co-host. Yeah. I know. This, so it was such a no brainer decision because everything I do is like, it seems like I know what I'm doing, but I'm feeling my way through it the entire time. So I started <laughs> doing it, interviewing people, et cetera. And it's so funny because obviously it's a pod, people listen on Spotify, yeah. Apple Podcasts, whatever. But as far as the YouTube, let's say not YouTube people don't interest YouTube watchers as much. So I had like TikTok people and whatever the case was. And it was interesting. It was it was great. In the beauty world, I kind of thought everything translated. Like, you know, if you... Sure. That made me realize like, oh, okay, like I maybe don't need to go through so many hoops to get guests, et cetera. So then you had left Sephora. And I knew the first initial thought was like, oh my God, we can finally talk about Sephora. And then we did it. And yeah, people loved our... The chemistry, rapport. the rapport. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously it's so much more fun for me to talk to somebody opposed to talking to myself when I didn't have a guest. We haven't even talked about this because I think a lot of people can relate to this when we were even reminiscing like how much younger we both were. Yeah. And you figure how many years went by that we didn't see each other all the time, but we always were like texting, et cetera, saw each other every now and again for like, what was that? Five years, et cetera. Yeah. But the minute we got back together again, it was like nothing. Yeah. It was like we picked up right where we left off, yeah. which was like the beauty of it. Yes. And it's crazy because I think a lot of people go through that with friendships or can. But the funny thing was I almost thought of it in the sense that like I was figuring out what I wanted to do. You were figuring out what you wanted to do. We were both younger. And it's like I think those are also some of the best friendships without even saying anything. I felt like and this this was the thing I was going to say we didn't talk about Um, almost like stepped away and just did what we had to do while we each grew up and like took care of what we needed to, mm -hmm. figured out whatever. And then it was just so funny, you coming back this time in this way, both of us such a difference. Oh, I agree totally. You know what I, I mean? I've said it even from when we were working together and then yeah. when we were still friends after the fact of you leaving, I just think that we've both have grown as people too. Mm -hmm. Like the life experiences that we both have gone through in like our personal lives, not just like work. This has been such like a journey for us both like separately, like you're saying, like yeah. we each figured out what we wanted to do and going on that separate journey, I think is so important for friends because then it's like yes. you come together with like the common interest still, but it it's like a new refreshing experience when you get to reconnect on like this. Yeah. Yes. higher level of thinking now which yes 100 percent. so everybody <clears throat> obviously loved the two of us talking and i don't want to do this alone and you were the perfect person to bring well, on and do it i'm very honored i really was like i <laughs> i told you when you texted me and officially like asked yes. me i was standing in work and i just remember looking down at my phone and i got this paragraph on my watch and i was like yes. oh my god accountability i was like what did you say that offended him i was like take accountability yes. and i'm just standing there and i was like i just remember met this girl five minutes ago yeah. i'm reading this message and i start like crying <laughs> and i was just so grateful and then yes. she goes is everything oh. and i was like i'm just i'm grateful i was the girl from mean girls yeah yeah like i'm crying on stage and it's yeah. funny when you told me that because <laughs> i even when i was texting you i started typing like question or whatever and then i said um 
you know, I've had so much fun doing the podcast with you. And then I thought about it. I'm like, that sounds like a breakup text. No, it really did. I was like, okay, so what did I say yeah, yeah. during it's an been episode? It's so that... fun. <laughs> it really has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like. Pick up your shit and leave. <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait, maybe I should word this differently. Just scrolling through, it was like, it was yeah. like the first like little bit. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, what did I even say? Yeah. I was yeah. like, what did I do? Well, I've realized as I've gotten older, the gay like drama queen story telling me I realize I am the king of burying the lead like I love to start a story where I'm alluding to all of the symptoms first and setting it up and people are like what happened what happened what happened and then the last thing I will say is what happened like, it's a clickbait it's a toxic trait <laughs> yeah 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 again it's like the storyteller in me but I'm like I need to like stop doing that in certain situations <laughs> I think I was crying because I was relieved <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I set up trauma and then took it away. And then, yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh my God. And then I was just standing there like yeah. crying at work. And I was like, I need to calm that down. so funny. <laughs> and yeah. this girl was looking at me. She was like, are you good? I was like, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. <laughs> As you can tell, if you're watching the video podcast, we did a new set. We set up a new set. Talk elevated. about the rebrand. Okay, we need to talk about this The set. journey. Yeah, yeah. So- it was last week. We started the whole process, and you should have seen the two of us gay mother fuckers running around Joanne's fabric, finding fabric, and then we found the flower section, running around like we just discovered gravity. Tiny Tim tiptoe through the tulips. I yes. was skipping through the aisles. Literally of, overwhelmed. With I've the never flowers. been in a Joe. I mean, I think I was in a Joanne's fabric once 15 years ago, My but I was started overwhelmed. racing. Yeah. It feels like I haven't eaten and had three espressos. Literally. I was like, I'm like shaking from the excitement. Putting together flower arrangements. On that giant, that was exciting. That was. Putting flower arrangements together on that giant table. I was like, we took over Joanne Fabrics. Yes. I was like, this is no one else's store right now, but yeah, ours. Yeah, Like Get close out. it down. Yeah. We want to rent it out. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the gayest experience oh and my God. Yeah. the initial fabric we found was these flowers that were pretty in person and when I hung it I texted you and I was like I'm this is disgusting like we were <laughs> wait what did you describe it as it literally between that and these oh. chairs which we'll get to it looked like we were in a grandma's basement from the 70s that untouched. like untouched. <laughs> you would find a corpse down there. Like it was dusty. It made you found these, grandma. Yes. It <laughs> made these chairs look worse, like browner. And, and it was so overwhelming. And it just did not read on camera. And we thought that pattern was going to be big enough we for thought this. Too. Wait, not only did we buy just a little bit of this fabric, uh, we bought the whole Eight yards. What is that thing called? A ream? No. <laughs> what is a that ream thing? of paper? Oh. Uh, yeah, what is that called? She had a name for I it, know. and we bought the whole roll, I'm yes. going to say. And I, what, what a waste. I know, because it just was too far away from the camera. And that you it was cut so it. busy. Oh, I cut it. I put rings on it. I hung it up. I was sitting here staring at it. It was making me nauseous because it was so busy. So then we, I ended up going with this. Um, we scrapped so that beautiful. thing. Yeah, and it ended up coming together. But it was like, this has all been in a course of what? Maybe five days? It really is incredible that it came together. And we were so certain, yeah. too, on that fabric. I was like, this Positive. is it. And Changed it within 24 hours. I know. Like, yeah, new, the, all the equipment, everything, lights, wow. et cetera. And blood, sweat, and tears. <clears throat> Literally, I, there's blood on the curtain behind me somewhere. And you're, I was, you're, aren't you bleeding Yeah, still? I, last yeah. night when we were doing the promo photos. I, but while I was hanging that curtain, I was like, the white curtains, I'm setting it up, doing it, and I just see blood all over and my hand. And it's Nightmare on Elm Street all Literally, over. Literally, and I'm yeah. like, oh, good. So there's <laughs> definitely blood somewhere on the curtains behind me. Yeah, no, I'm happy about how it came out. Uh, it looks so good. And I honestly, like when I walked in here, because you were trying yes. to send me the video, you're like, I just want to see your honest reaction. I couldn't sleep that night. Mm -hmm. I was like, just let me in. Oh, and it and was breathtaking walking in here. Oh, we you. need to talk about the elephant the in the room. The chairs. We're getting new chairs. What we a scam and a sham that Amazon put on. <laughs> Amazon should be required to upload with every single thing a iPhone photo of the product because the promo photos like with the white back like edited and brightened and whatever these we wanted yellow and they came mustard and then when the shadow was hitting it it's like brown some of the customer review photos which I always go to because it's going to show you like the real yeah the lights are off there's mayonnaise on their camera lens and I can't <laughs> 
you can't even tell. So then you can only go off the product photos, which are so bright and beautiful. And they came and it was just lackluster. Well, and it really is like it was so misleading, too, because it said these were described as a bright yellow. Yeah. This is Dijon mustard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you yeah. are lying. Literally. Telling stories and tales out of school. I this know. is not yeah. bright yellow. No. This is dingy Dijon. I know. So we ended up ordering. We have hot, New. hot, hot pink chairs coming. If they come in and they are red, I'm going to swing. I know. I know. <laughs> they better not be. I they are swear. Wait, beefier. so what are you going to do with these? I'm going to try to return them. Listen, and this is what Amazon wants us to do. They want us to not return things because they want us to be intimidated. Well, they want you to like struggle and be like, well, good luck sending us those two You giant better chairs. believe because yeah. you can return Amazon products in Kohl's now. Could you imagine walking into Kohl's with these? Oh, oh my God. We I'm going to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, tell me about it. If anyone is a Amazon return connoisseur, sound off because you better believe I'm walking into Kohl's unboxed, unbroken down. Like or I'm keeping the legs on these, walking into Kohl's, slamming this on the counter and saying, <laughs> Here send you it go. back. <laughs> yeah. Can I, they resell that in Kohl's? They send it back to Amazon. When you return Amazon products to Kohl's, Kohl's is just the middleman sending it back to Amazon. Even paying for Prime, half the time it doesn't even come within the Prime window. And why do I need to work at the post office to send something back? Like the boxes, the tape, I need to print the label, do the whatever. And I get it if it's a small thing. But something like this, what the hell am I going to do? To me, false advertising because this is not yes. what was I, if it was described the as the photo was so bright i was yes. like when i saw these i was like there is this is lies and fairy yeah. tales over here where this the hell is am joke. i gonna get a box big enough like break unbreak these down what do i just put the screws in a ziploc bag like I, you know what i yeah, mean like, like what do you do with or, a piece of furniture i know oh, amazon god they yeah are. so i'm gonna try because i mean they were not like crazy but but do i don't need them you know what's I, more sick about this situation though you got gooped and duped by Amazon, but what did you go and do? You ordered some more shit off Amazon. Isn't it? It's well, a sickness. Well, because what are we going to do? Wait, they have a monopoly. They do. What am I going to do? Looking for accent <laughs> chairs, and we went around, and even by me, we have a lot of stores, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, uh, uh, at, home. at Home, which is Costco for home decor. Nothing. 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 No bright pink, and also, no. too, but you go in there for a bright pink chair, you might find it, but it's $329, 100%. and I said, okay, that's for one. Even as funny as it was, the pink chairs I ended up getting, they did have them on other sellers. Like, the exact chairs were, like, not in person anywhere, of course, like Overstock or Wayfair. Yeah. Twice the price. They it's, were like $600 each. How do they get away with this? This and is that's amazing. What I mean. And that's the thing. We're living in a world where I get it. Like Amazon is a sweatshop. So like that's why they can probably do this shit so low. But yeah. they have a monopoly on it. So it's like, what are you supposed to do? And this is another thing. It's tough living in a, a gay person's world. Because if you want anything fun, colorful, bright, different, you're never going to find it. Yeah. So if you go to accent chairs, they're not selling accent chairs for us queens who want like bright pink be like, you know what? Chairs, they're selling beige. Beige. What? <laughs> Get out of here. Like, I'm so tired of everything being beige. Well, like, and even look at clothes. Yeah. Oh, so, should we talk about started. that? Because do you know, know if anybody even knows what we went through for the promo look? Which they'll see it in this and episode. And my God. Yes. Finding men's clothes that are A, fashionable, or yes. like even a slightly more effeminate is hard. Horrible. And I'm sorry, but like it's 2023 pink and lavender and all these other like bright colors. If it's not in men's, like you walk into H&M, Zara, yeah. wherever, the whole men's side is like 50 shades of gray. I know. And I it's know. depressing. And then you go on the women's side and it's like oh. Wizard of Oz when it goes in color. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yes, literally and black I'm and like, white to color. And I'm like, what is going on in I here? Know. This is un. Fair, like all the time, like the pink studded jacket, women's. I just have to buy like a huge size. I'm I like, know. this is ridiculous. And it's just, it's unfair. Like, it why really do they is. think men don't want to wear any expression, exciting like clothing or like, I know. I, it's just, and it's funny even from store to store because then I go to Zara by us in American Dream and it's pretty flamboyant every now and again. Like, they'll have colors, et cetera. And then the last couple times I've been in the city for events or whatever, I'll run to Zara. And you would think in Manhattan, beige and gray. What the fuck? 
no one's wearing color. Like, no. If I feel like if they did a consumer survey of like any of these stores and they asked a wide spectrum of men and be like, what colors do you want to see in clothing? I know. It wouldn't be beige, white, black, and gray. Like have those as a staple, but also have the option of color. It's I know. so frustrating to me. Literally, I feel like 90% of the inventory is just like t-shirts for oh, men. Um, yeah. I'll go to Target. With Looney Tunes on it, with Bugs Bunny spinning a basketball. Stop <laughs> it. Yes, literally. Yeah. <laughs> When, oh, like, I don't it. need that. <laughs> like, where are the, like, clothes? You can see in the promo photo your pink jacket mm-hmm. with the studs. Yep. So we ended up getting the lavender jacket that I'm wearing at Primark, which, of course, European. This is the only reason. And women's, always. Women's. women's. Yeah. We were like, okay, what are we going to do? We're stud it, whatever. So cut to Michael's. Got, st- like, the gems we use on our face for yes. makeup. And those mother effers stuck to that jacket like nobody's business. And we bought the leather glue, too. And I was like, oh, I nope, they're stuck. Like, they're, they're stuck. on there. So if that. you look at the promo photo with the let me in the lavender, that that's a little craft for you guys if you yep. want to do that. It's worked like a dream. This is what it takes. I know. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's the amount of work that goes into it, too. I don't, I didn't realize no. doing like full concepts, too, because that's what, yeah. like, and you even said this. You're like, if we're going to do this rebrand, I want it to be like from the jump, like I know. different, fully done. Not every week something's changing. Exactly. And just, I mean, those promo photos. I know. Okay. Did you hear about Kim Kardashian on American Horror Story? And did you see the viral thing going around of the guy holding the sign saying Kim Kardashian ruined my life? Have you heard about this? No. American Horror Story first. It was Pete Davidson. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, I forgot they were together. Because he, I, I don't know why I associated him now with Ariana Grande. Was that before or after? He was with Ariana before. before. And then okay. Kim, and then who was after that? Someone else dated him. Wasn't it somebody else? Am I crazy? Wasn't there someone else after Kim? Probably. Oh, God. I can't even keep up. He Her was on American every- Horror Story is... Why? Ryan Murphy needs to be stopped. I said this to my fiance a while ago. I was like, genuinely, I feel like as a society, Ryan Murphy has a weird chokehold on everybody that we continue to watch the programming despite it flopping again and again and again. Like, what Ryan Murphy thing in recent memory has been unbelievable. I can't remember the last time I watched, even aside from American Horror Story and like the other things that he's done, like American Crime Story. I never watched it, but I heard yeah. it, was, it was good. Yes, okay, Fine. yes, American Crime um, Story. I didn't have the appeal, the drive, I, I didn't want to watch it. I didn't care. For some reason, yeah. I was just kind of over it. Like, I was Amer- like the American horror, whatever, American crime, whatever. Like And now there's American too- horror stories where it's a different thing every episode. We got it. Like, stop it. It's Please. insane. It's, it's just too many, like, the anthology series yes. and everything. And it's just, like, let it go. Like, American Horror Story at, you know, how many years ago was that? Was that, like, 10 years ago? Oh, my ago God. That yeah. Started? What are we on? Season 12? It was incredible. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there were certain seasons that I absolutely loved, but you, even like the in-between seasons of one that like ones that I loved, they kind of like lost me. I was like, what is this? Like, I know I loved the first loved Coven. I loved Hotel because of Gaga. Like that drew me back in. But after that, I was like, you're losing me again, because where is this going? Like, I know. It's very aimless. I could just see them having like a giant wall of ideas and they like blindfold him. And it's like, yeah, the tail on the donkey. Like, oh, you do it. And it's like, OK, that's the next one. I think what the downfall of American Horror story was was like it got so popular and the first couple seasons were so good obviously when shows like that happen i'm sure everybody in hollywood wants to be on a show like that but the core mm-hmm. of it was that it was like that staple cast it was it was sarah paulson jessica lang evan peters okay but you keep that world what it is and like those are the people on the show right. but then there was so many characters that you would get a piece of a storyline and that storyline wasn't continued for like five episodes and by the time if at all there was like 10 storylines that just never wrapped up he was like if anybody showed interest of wanting to be on the show he just said yes and there was like 25 characters it was insane and it's so funny too because even like oh they're like they don't know what to do with the character just kill him if you want a cameo on it that's what i want i want you dead in five minutes Opening kill. I want Kim yeah. Kardashian's character dead in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's oh, 100%. what I want. And it's like- You the... think I'm watching 12 episodes of Kim Kardashian acting? I don't get it. Oh my God. He's going to murder me. Yeah, like, like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't get what the appeal oh is. Oh my like, God. Is this she... whole milk? Like, that's the horror story. <laughs> like, shaking her salad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a theory, too, about this. And I just thought of this, too. And in all fairness of, like, Ryan Murphy, too. Do you think that they, like, contracted him to do, like, they signed him on for, like, five more seasons, like, years I ago think, oh, of I American so. Horror? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you 
almost have to wonder too if like he's losing interest, you know? So it's yes. like he's running out of ideas and running out of steam because it's like, okay, we've done the circus, we've yeah. done hotels, we've <laughs> yeah. done like all of these yeah. things. And it's like, I would run out of ideas too. And I wonder if it's even him to a degree because I always notice in American Horror Story that the first episode is always directed by him. I have like a traumatic relationship with American Horror Story because I watch the first episode every season. I don't know why, because I'm like, let's try again, even though we've had eight failures and I inevitably end up watching it. The first episode it's not that good, but I'm like, okay. And then it's just a nosedive for the rest of the season. I couldn't get through, what was the one that you said, stories, where it was like a different- I didn't even watch it. I was trying to like understand, because I thought it was a different story every week, and I was like, well, that's really kind of silly. But I was yeah. like, you know what, TV shows do that, where it's like, they tell a story and it wraps up in 30 minutes, or sometimes it bleeds into the next episode, sure, whatever, yes. I'm down. I could not understand it. I couldn't follow- what was happening? Like, it's too much. The appeal was, it said Kim Kardashian, Emma Roberts. So I'm like, is there, is it like two female killers? Is there like a, a an American horror, like a tragedy yeah. with two female killers? Like, I, I don't get it. Why? The reason they did this is because they obviously want people to watch. And I'm gonna... Maybe just the first one. Good luck. To see how bad Kim Kardashian is in the first one. Okay. It's going to be cringe. I'll watch it just for that. Oh, we have to at least watch the first one. I will, I even if I love it, where I won't watch the rest of the season, but I need to see Kim Kardashian in this first episode. What is that even going to be? I know. Look I can't it. even, pic- I can't picture it. Imagine all the poor working actors. Just like, And okay, then just cool. looking at her and they're like- yeah. Okay. So you <laughs> d- haven't heard this Kim Kardashian ruin my life thing? No. Yeah. Okay. What is this? So it like, started to go viral. It was a picture of this guy like holding a sign saying Kim Kardashian ruined my life. So his name is David Levinson. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And basically what happened was 2014, he was a successful entrepreneur for like a tech thing, like an app. And what I gather is that he came up with the Kim Mojis idea. Like he went to her with the like... Kim Kardashian emojis Mm -hmm. like of her butt or whatever it was like and it was a bunch of Kim themed things so he went to her she loved the idea and then they were going to work on it together and what happened allegedly is she like texted him saying like hey have you trademarked Kim emojis yet and he was like no I haven't like but I can she went behind his back trademarked Kim emojis didn't include him in any way, shape, or form, and went on to make millions and millions and millions. And he got nothing. Oh. And he ended up, so the ruin my life aspect is he ended up suing her. And from what I gather, I don't have the exact figures, but it's along the lines of, I mean, we're talking millions and millions and millions. Like That he's um, suing her for? He sued her for millions. She countersued him for millions. And the way it was described in some of the articles I was reading was basically... She was just countersuing him, knowing he couldn't even pay the legal things. He wouldn't even be able to obviously pay the the uh, suit money if uh, she ended up winning or whatever the case was. But it was basically just an intimidation countersue that she knew it would stop him from suing her. But it ended up costing this man hundreds of thousands of dollars just to do the legal battle for nothing. Didn't end up getting anything out of it and pursuing it. And his wife ended up divorcing him. Like he like lost everything. Oh my God. And you know, what's crazy too, is that, you know, she did all this to like make money. You were going to make money off of it regardless because you need more money. Seriously. You don't have enough avenues that you're covering right now. And obviously for legal reasons alleged, but do I believe this? Yeah. Kim Kardashian would trademark the wind if she could. The Kardashians are like trademark crazy. Like anything they can trademark. Kylie tried to trademark Kylie. And Kylie Minogue was like, no, bitch. And Kylie Minogue is actually the, like the one that stopped her from still why Kylie hasn't been able to trademark Kylie. Because no she way. also, because Kylie Minogue also, like a lot of the time, just goes by Kylie. And she like stopped her. But they trademark everything. And so I believe it. I don't doubt that for a second like how that sick, she would have done that. Yeah, how sick. To somebody trying to make. You know, and literally came up and developed this idea for you, and then you're just going to blatantly steal it, like. And I'm because sure you he needed has... to make four hundred million instead of two hundred. Right. It's really, really sick because, yeah, like I said too, you need more money because you're not oversaturated in yeah. the beauty market and like even lingerie or what everything. is it like everything. Skins, yeah. yeah I, I just it makes me her three hundred dollar rock trash can. What you didn't see her home line? She came out with like home stuff, and it was like. 
it literally online it looked and people were dragging her they were dragging her when the photos came out because it literally was like a trash can a paper holder the most basic like home stuff and it all was like gray cement just imagine a trash can like made out of like gray cement like stone and it was like three hundred dollars a bathroom garbage can size by the way like it would fit like three tissues and it was like $300. Who's asking for this stuff? Like, what are they like reading into that they're like, you should do this? Most of the people I meet don't love the Kardashians. You know what I mean? You could right. be indifferent about them. I, you don't need to hate them, but right. they're not a fan, let's say. Sure. But then you like look this way and there's like 400 million people that follow them. They make money hand over fist. I don't run into people that are buying Kardashian merchandise by the fistful on a regular basis, yet they are selling it by the truckload. Who are these people that are like Kardashian fan fans? Yeah, as much as people say too, they're like, oh, I don't care what they do. You know, that's the Kardashians. I don't really care about them. I'm like, but you know what they're doing because you're looking it up. You're giving them the Google searches. You're giving them everything because if they do something that you don't like, you're searching you're posting you're yeah. sharing it your word of mouthing in one way shape or form like we're doing it right now i know and it's it's yeah. a little sick that it's they do have this like chokehold on america in yeah. a way because no matter what they do they're gonna be put on this pedestal yeah. whether it's good or bad it's only gonna make their name a little more well known and it's only gonna make them even more in that spotlight forever. Yeah. I feel like it, it really is one of the most brilliant marketing things ever. If someone doesn't know or is it that person that says, oh, I don't care about them, I'm not a fan, but then the rabid fan is buying the products and going, oh, have you heard of this? I love it. And they probably don't even tell the friend that it's a Kardashian thing and then the friend buys it and so, and it's like this trickle effect. Oh, 100% because they, I think what they're even trying to do is make it this mass market appeal and it's like, yeah. okay, let's see who can buy it. And listen, I'm guilty of buying like Kylie Cosmetics all mm-hmm. that because you know what, there are certain things that I was like, okay, I want to try. But then at the end of the day, I'm part of that problem. I know. And it's so funny too because there was a trend move posted I think recently that they were like, oh my God, brands that we miss like that have no longer, yeah. that are no longer in business and it was KKW. I know. I'm like, you're, like, that was such a sought after line. What happened with that? Something that people actually wanted and now totally. it's not here. We talked about this and I have a theory that the entire brand was conceived, created, and everything by Mario. Because you remember in the beginning of the launch, anything when she was like doing the horrible swatches like on her arm or whatever, all her contour sticks, like any product she was launching, Mario was in, her makeup artist was in every single video using her as a model talking about how to use it. I literally think it was like his brand with her name on it. She said, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me? Did it. And then once Cody bought it and it got shelved to like come back for the quote unquote rebrand, he came out with his own line. So now that she doesn't have somebody making the brand for her, I don't think she either wants to do it or can do it. It's just surprising to me, too, because if, like, somebody is asking for something and, like, I think, I mean, there's a lot of people that were obsessed with that line. You yeah. don't want to just slap your name on it like everything else. No, I know. Like, but, like, no tea. It's, yeah. th- that's all. I feel like that's all that happens with them is that they come out with these random, like, I didn't even know she had a home line. Like, who's asking for that? Let alone people that actually want your beauty line. Like, let somebody make the brand for you and just put your name on it. I know. Call it a day. But that's the thing. It's probably marked up so much that if tens of thousands of people buy that trash can, she made millions because she made it for $2 and she's selling it for $300. And she'll never have to sell it again. She could say it was a limited edition and move on with her life. The the upcharge of everything is just probably making them like enough to not maybe be quantity of sales like a regular person who starts a business and needs volume like because they're just reaming everybody. Right. It's really wild. So, yeah, this guy online, though. The reason it oh, uh, yeah. I he, it started to go viral more and more, I saw it like all over TikTok and Instagram. It was like a picture of him holding a sign because he's like has nothing to lose pretty much. And he started a website called Kim Kardashian ruined my life dot com. And the traffic to the site is like through the roof because people are like now becoming aware of this. If this is like really how it the cookie crumbled, like I hope. This Good man gets his spotlight. What a horrible thing, too. Like, as someone that has worked so long creating things and whatever the case is, like, I, I, at most, I need to deal with people, like, stealing my content and, like, you know, some TikTok page reposting all my videos. But, like, to that level where, like, you had this million, million, million dollar idea to get screwed like that. And clearly and- it 
she loved it and too. lose everything. Yeah, that is like heartbreaking. That's sickening. Yeah, to think that he could have had such a different life too, and if lost they had everything. Just I th- I'm pretty sure his like wife left him. Like the that's whole nine. So I mean, yeah. that's sick. I mean, even so, even if this was like, if that was the only thing that happened to, even if he had like a perfect life otherwise, and you know, he still had his family life, whatever. The fact that one of the, probably one of the biggest deals he would have made in I his know. life. That is, and it's one thing horrible. to lose out on an opportunity. But to be screwed over in that way where it costs you that much, oh, that's yeah. gut-wrenching. It's one thing to have an idea and someone steals it from you and, and your life is, you know, you just didn't get the payoff. But to have that much of a loss and repercussion is shocking. And like I said, I believe it. They would try to trademark the sun if they could. Yeah. It's just really, ugh. It's, yeah. yeah, it's very, very, it's it's giving me the ick thinking about it. And 100%. I hope this guy, I hope he really does truly wholeheartedly, all joking aside, I hope he does get, yeah. you know, some sort of payout because you know what? She can afford it. And yes. she, needs to, she needs to own up to it that you were a little, you were, that's a little scummy. Yes. That's gross. That's really, yes. really sad. Did you see the thing that shook down with Huda Beauty and this creator called Mina, what she did to her? No. Okay. So Wait, do I live under a rock? Like girl, for real? Get on it. I don't know if someone had stitched. Oh, someone had stitched it, which I appreciated. She basically stitched this creator, makeup artist, Mina, her original video, and then what um shook down. And then I went to Huda's page and looked into it, whatever. Okay. So <clears throat> there is a creator on TikTok and Instagram. On TikTok, her handle is more from Mina with two A's. M I N-A-A. And she basically made a video where she is using color corrector almost as like the only thing, like as her base or whatever. And she is darker complexion. So she has darker circles and she has like the orange under here. She has a little green here for her uh, redness. She has like a, a little yellow for sallow and whatever. All color corrector, but A, the girl understands color theory flawlessly because when she blends out all of the color corrector, she doesn't need foundation. She looks incredible. Um, And she does. She has like darkness all around the eyes. And like as a makeup artist, anything she was doing was not incorrect, first of all, like looking at it. B, she didn't, it's not like she made this video saying this is how you're supposed to use color corrector. She specifically says, this is how it works for me. You guys have asked me, let me show you. Okay, Mina gets an Instagram DM from Huda Beauty's team. Hey, girl, we love your video. We would love to repost it. If it's okay with you, let us know. XO. Mina, obviously, being a creator, is like, wow, oh, my God, thank you so much. Like, yes, that's amazing. I would love that. Huda Beauty takes the video and says, psych. Post this video, stitching her, starts out with Mina putting the color corrector on, cuts to Huda because she stitched it, and goes, you do not need to be using this much color corrector. You can literally just do bop, bop, bop. You do not need to be doing all this. Mina comes back and, like, shows on a TikTok, like, responding to it. She DMs Huda's team after that and goes, if you were going to use my video to, like, drag me I wish you told me because the initial DM from Huda was like love your video girl XOXO I wish you would have just slapped me in the face and told me I'm stupid and worthless like literally made this girl think that they were going to refeature her we love your video can we like blah 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 and then use the video to like slander your to slam this girl what the take was which I completely agree with what also infuriates me is like to Mina I'm so sorry that this person did this to you, like that this person that is successful has the platform, has the things. Like, are we still telling people in 2023 that the way you do something is wrong? You know what I mean? Especially if you're representing it in a way where, like I said, Mina never said this is the way to do it. She said, this is how I do it. You are asking to see how I do it. So here you go. She's not misrepresenting that this is the way you're supposed to use color corrector. She's using the appropriate verbiage. And you're, you, Huda Beauty, with millions and millions and millions of followers, your brand, the success, the whatever, feel the need to still make a video where you're, like, dragging this creator that's trying to get bigger and trying to build a career? Did they post this on their, like, social, the Huda, Beauty? Huda's page. 
so not, not, not the Huda Beauty brand, Huda's page. Okay, because yeah. I was even going to say, too, I was like, I'm surprised that they would even post that on their beauty page, knowing if it's like, they don't have color correctors, they're not using it. Yeah, That's yeah, why I'd no. be like, oh, red flag. It like, was just like typical how Huda just like, her her personal, if you will, like her, yeah. What, like, what's the reason? Like, I don't understand I why you would do that. To, like, what does it matter? I know. But okay, also too, some of the makeup trends that she does isn't always flattering either. So, so then, like, exactly, because the what the take was that infuriated me was a couple weeks ago, we had Huda doing the Meredith challenge, pouring a gallon of foundation on her face. And she says, like, basically, of course, obligatory and ambiguous. So she still biffles with Meredith goes like, it looks great. It's not for me, but it's not great. Like, you know, I would never do it like this. And then ends the video by going, thank you, Meredith, for sharing your tips with the world. And oh, then okay. Nina, so who is putting on color corrector in a completely appropriate way, understands color theory, isn't claiming it's the right way, telling people it works for her. If you want to see it, here it is, and drags her in a video. Yes. Yeah, but so Meredith a, is thank you, Meredith, for changing the world. For, you know, doing God's work over here. Exactly. For showing us all like what we need to be doing. And here you do this to this smaller creator that's trying to build it up. Like, and I, I just feel so bad for Mina because, like I said, I, I, I know the difficulty of building it up and starting it out and trying to get it. And she's doing great, like where she's at with everything. But if that had happened to me, where I thought Huda Beauty was going to refeature me, said, oh my God, we love your video, and then posted that, just looking at me, critiquing it, being like, oh, you don't need to be doing all this. That would have devastated me. I would have loved if Mina commented under the video and been like, wow, okay, so like you were in my DMs. Like- she might have, I'm because pre- she's pretty vocal about it. She made like a follow-up video, like stitching like the DMs, basically saying like oh, uh, good for green her. screen, saying like, hey, next time, can you tell me you're going to use my video to drag me? Here we go, because I've we've talked about this before, that the makeup community is just a bunch of bullies. I feel it like really this is. is like high school bullies. And that's who I feel like Huda is deep down as a person. You are just a bully. What that you hell? are Like you are looking for reasons to go after people people and it, it infuriates me because this community everything should be like oh you know like let's support each other i wish it was that way i really do yeah. again this high pedestal yeah up there where it's like you know these people feel like they can't be taken down and their yeah. opinions need to be heard and they could do whatever and say yes. whatever get out of here that's and that's the crazy thing to me you're huda you still think you need to make these clickbait negative videos? Like, that is remarkable to me. I am one one hundredth the size of Huda. And in my two-year career, never, and as a makeup artist for 10 years, have I seen a lot of people do techniques that, like, make me roll my eyes? It's one thing to maybe, like, react to it, like, oh, my God, wow, that's wild, whatever. But to literally stitch a video of somebody and then cut to you going, this is wrong. You don't need to be doing this. Shut up. If it works for this person, let them do it that way. You you t- show us how to use color corrector on your own avail. Why don't you make a video? Don't even mention her if you're going to be negative about it. Right. You make a video showing your followers how to use color corrector. Yeah, and, because but you, you think you're untouchable. With you think, 15 million yeah. followers feel the need to drag this girl with 30,000? And is doing something artistic and skillful yeah. that it actually looks amazing. And you know what? You don't even need to put foundation on afterwards. She's probably jealous. That's what that I mean. she doesn't know how to do that. That's what was extra sad to me about it was like it would be one thing if Huda was doing this to somebody who was like putting their contour on with a fork or whatever. But this girl understands color theory. It looks beautiful. And to me, it was also discounting. It was like kind of like ick in the sense that the way Huda responded to it being like, you should never use this much color corrector. You don't need to use this much color corrector. Completely. Oh, but like, we need to use your full coverage foundation, right? Girl. A, it's completely writing off that maybe some people do. You're writing off people that have, if they have rosacea, they have melasma, they have vitiligo, they have port wine stain, whatever a a, a skin thing could be going on. Yes, someone could. Me, when I shave my beard, I need to put color corrector all on my beard. But just because you Huda Beauty, which to me, that's because she is a makeup artist. She was a makeup artist before she's doing anything. And I understand you were probably only working on models whose job it is to have perfect skin. So you could go with a little setting powder and they looked amazing. Right. You know when we used to do Fashion Week. Oh, my God. I could yeah. take one dot of foundation and blend it out on these people's skin and they look I'm flawless. Like, good to go, hun. It was their yeah. job to be flawless. Yep, but 100%. regular people who don't do that Huda that God only knows if you've done their makeup before, 
maybe they do need to use that much color corrector. Or maybe they want to. It was so tone deaf, like, let, let alone that. But then, yeah, and then you're coming out with your foundation that is like lacquer with a bottle of perfume dumped in it. When and you're you, telling anybody about. Yeah, like, and you want to tell anybody about anything, but let's go back to everything is heavily fragranced, but that's all, all okay. And then when you pound on makeup, that's all okay. Yeah. And you overdraw your lips and you do all of that. And like, that might not be appealing to everybody, but here you are, like, you're you're setting the beauty standard, which who are you? Who yeah. are you to decide for everybody in the world that this is the this is the standard and no one else needs to do that? Yeah. Mind your business. It's just so shocking to me because like especially me now as a bigger creator, I would never, it would not even cross my mind to come across a, another creator with, and this is just on TikTok, 50,000 followers and capitalize on one of their videos to critique them and be negative to make my own value to my followers seem higher. That is so ugh to me, especially, and like I said, me being bigger, quote unquote, I'm still one one hundredth as big as Huda is. That is a thought in your mind? Well, and even so too, it's like, it's one thing to almost make a general statement about a trend, like, yeah. you know, contouring with a fork or whatever, overuse of color corrector, using lipstick as blush, whatever. If you don't agree with it, make a generalized video. But I think it's the fact that she went to a length or had her team go to the lengths of message her, get on her side, let us use the video. Let and us then lure just you into a full sense of back security. Of the hand and yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Diva, we love you. Yeah. Get ready, bitch. Yeah. Like to Saddle mislead, up your career that was what down. was even crazier about it. Oh, yeah. If I get a message like that, I never would have thought it would have been for a negative reason like that you were going to stitch my video saying I was doing something wrong or or you don't need to do this I ne never would have crossed my mind I, my heart broke for her I mean shame on Huda though but this is like, not the first time that she has thought she was untouchable I know with you know everything that she's done from this to beauty bakery it's yeah. like you just think you're untouchable and you think that no yeah. one's ever gonna notice what you're doing we don't need to do this tell people what happened with the beauty bakery thing if they don't know beauty bakery had a uh, campaign image it was all beauty bakery if you don't know too it's in the name yeah it is like all uh food based kitchen based things so it's like flour is their setting powder mm -hmm. they have the foundation which is uh whipped something something so yeah. it's all food related so there was a campaign image of the ceo indie brand very mm -hmm. like it's a smaller brand um and she was whipping up something in the kitchen had like a mixing bowl and the apron and like the flour setting powder yeah. on her face whatever so then huda comes out with the baking powder which Easy we bake. all know yeah and she had the verbatim campaign image yeah. mixing bowl powder on the face apron on like mixing it up smiling in like on the kitchen floor or whatever just like the beauty bakery one i know and some people didn't have a problem with it they were like oh she's inspired by it and i'm like this is yeah you're stealing from yeah. someone else let me like, copy your homework yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it a little different like yeah, yeah like you are just like copy and fucking paste oh, this happens all the time too like crayon case was it crayon case and then, yes, it was with Crayon Case and Sephora Collection. Sephora Collection came out with that Moschino, like, school supplies makeup. Oh, yeah. And Crayon Case was like, oh, fuck our drag, huh? Oh, they did it first. Yeah. Oh, Crayon oh, Case wow. is, like, known for doing, like, school supplies, like, makeup. Oh, makeup. And it was so crazy that Sephora Collection came out with this Moschino Collection, and it was, like, pencils and yes. everything. It was, like, highlighters that were, like, highlighters. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, like, markers and everything. And, like, it was a computer that opened up to a pal. Like, this is directly inspired i know and taken from these small brands what is wrong with people in beauty i don't know and you just think that nobody's gonna notice because it's a smaller brand you're sick in the head i just don't understand like i said if i started a makeup line whatever like my entire mission would be to make something original it's beyond my realm of comprehension to be someone that is on one hand ambitious enough to start a line come up with the products do all that work and then when you're at the finish line of like okay it's time to promote it no, oh, okay. Well, I'm tired now. Let's just steal that entire concept. What? That doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't understand where that disconnect is of the first 90% originality. And then like, is that really what you want to be known for? Because I do think a lot of these brands consider any publicity to be good, but it's like when you were straight up That's the problem. stealing and you are, you're literally using this full fledged idea from somebody else. You can't, you have a whole team. Yeah. You have millions of you know dollars that you could spend on like uh, any campaign that you want but here you go taking the idea of 
from somebody else and not coming up with something original because now it's just going to be that same comparison the whole time. Like you're always, don't you want to like stand out and be different and come out with something that people are like, Oh my God, what is that? That looks so different. That campaign was so beautiful. Like, yeah, I cannot understand. And it happens every day. I know it's really wild and it just makes it harder and harder to like be enthusiastic about the beauty world because it's just the people that are at the top it day after day after day after day something comes out about these people that i'm just like what and it, is it's going this on? hamster wheel of just yeah. problematic like issue and i'm like oh my god it's tiring i know it really is tiring it really is speaking of originality um the drag race finale <gasps> we have to re- talk about it oh let's do it if you haven't seen the drag race finale we're talking about yeah, who wins spoiler, spoiler alert yeah congratulations sasha colby sasha fucking colby i she her and nature were incredible one of my favorite top two in in recent memory. I wanted both of them to like win. Uh, I, it, those were my top two. Casey that I was said like, he's really... like if there ever was a double crowning. Like I was like I agree. You oh, know what no, I mean? I, like I felt, but you know what though, the way that Sasha came in and <gasps> she said, "Can I use you as a mop?" Ate that <laughs> finale up. She said, "I'm going to mop the stage yes. with you." Ma'am. She was the only one start to finish that it just everything was conceptual. Even when it came down to their solo performances, like Anitra's was cute, the Lotus, but it just was a little yeah. off brand. Did you hear about what happened in the first take of that apparently? No. So there was an image that like came out on Instagram and while they were taping this like the week prior or whenever they taped it, it was like very recent that the first take of her Anitra's performance for Lotus, so one of the dancers broke their leg. <gasps> I Yes, I think I heard that. Yeah, that they like broke their leg and then you just saw this person like laid out on stage and it was like horrible and apparently they had to redo it. So imagine going into this like full energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you just like, you're like, oh, no, they're just wrap dragging it up, his gal. body off. You better do it again. <laughs> they're dragging yeah. the body off for the second take and she needs to keep the Yeah, they're the like, same put on up. the shoes and do it again, dear. Yeah, like, yeah. And you know, Anitra was like, and Fuck. just in general, like it was a cute thing. She took like almost like the mm-hmm. sympathetic moving route of like Lotus blooming into whatever, you know, going through the mud and which is lovely. Oh, but it yeah. was like the finale is not the time to do what you're known for. Like this song should have been called Walk That Duck. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Now's not the time to experiment. Like, oh, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. just was a little like, I don't even know if she did do voguing like I, or the Walk mm. the Duck in the thing. I didn't even she see might it. Have, and I, I, I but it was know. just, yeah. So, and I knew it was obviously going to be between her and Sasha Colby. Uh, to me, Lux, her song, even the fashion, it was a decent, the fashion something or yeah. it's giving fashion. It was giving knockoff Naomi Small's legs. That's just all I was getting the whole time. Wasn't there? Um... And her fashion song from All Stars 4. I was just, when I, she takes the wig off and she's bald. Wait, Naomi. and then even um, 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 oh my god, what's her name? Milk did this. Remember yes. it? All Stars or wasn't yes. that All Stars when she did fashion? That song yes. and it was so it was very that. It, it just was, was. I was like, I have seen this in four different iterations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was very odd too. So I don't know. Like I don't know if they have help with the producers, but I'm like nobody remembers I all know. these other songs by these people. Exactly. No one's same. gonna after 15 years. No one's saying uh, this is. Let's, we've done it's, this. We've done fashion. We've done the yeah. song fashion. It, like, is it fashion? Peppermint. Is it fashion? Is it, yeah. It's fashion. Is it fashion? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like is it it's fashion? fashion. We know it's fashion. <laughs> we've seen nine songs with fashion. Like, and then Mistress. I just feel like that's not her wheelhouse. That kind of performing because the choreography, sure. or whatever. And then you have Sasha Colby come out. The, you talk about concepts. That mermaid and the braids. And I, the- you would have thought she, you were at a stadium tour for a pop superstar getting carried out with the snake bodice. Oh, I was thinking mermaid. It was a snake. Yes, with the hair. Duh. Oh, my pulling God. The, mermaid. Pulling the snake leg tube uh, yeah, off, off of her. <laughs> and then to still, again, like Anitra, the callback of the ksh- with yeah. the neck crack yeah. going in the whole time. Just I, We were on the edge of the couch. And then the final lip sync and i said to you it just felt to me like first of all when they said the song what was the song knock on wood i was unfamiliar with the song the last and i said yeah i was unfamiliar with it i knew it once i heard it i was like oh i know this song but knock on wood it just didn't and i said to casey i'm like if we get some goopy doop reba mcintyre like knock on wood knock on wood i was like i will flip this table for the final lip for the last lip sync of the colby and anitra yeah two of the best lip syncers ever it's like when they invited kennedy davenport back for all stars as a lip sync assassin and they did reba and kennedy <laughs> i don't even remember yes, that kennedy can 
do backflips from the rafters and you invite Kennedy Davenport back as a lip sync assassin and give her Because of You by Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Like, what are and you doing? It's, and it's giving All Star Story Wrecking Ball as the last one. I was like, what is happening? Really? Who picks the songs? And it, that was Kennedy too. Oh yes, my God. Yes. Yeah. Poor Kennedy. Like, <laughs> give me like break. rain on me. Yeah. What are you doing? And then it starts. And I was like, okay, thank God. I felt like it was a more of a, a older gay classic. Mm -hmm. Like, so I was like, okay, this is giving. Yeah. And I said, I was like, it just felt to me like Anitra was performing a song, any song. I could have, I could have changed the song and the way Anitra was performing it, it would have worked because yeah. it wasn't specific where to me, Sasha had an entire concept thought up with the coat take the coat off, rip the wire out and take the dress off into the lingerie. And then even at the end, her coat was like bedding that she was laying on the bedding in the lingerie. Like it was just conceptual. It was yeah. a performance from start to finish. This is my unpopular opinion too. This is how I feel. I'm not saying this is how it goes. So don't come for me. Come but for him. I, <laughs> I feel like sometimes if there is a clear front, front runner... runner that they almost start to like tell that person, the other person to like play it down. <gasps> yes, you were saying this. Cause I don't know. There's something that it gives me very like rose at the finale. She's like, I sprained my ankle. My ankle hurts. Yeah. I don't know. Like, and listen, I would have been happy with either one of them, but like, it just seemed kind of weird for Anitra not to be like doing, I mean, yeah, free willy over, yes. in the words of Selena City, she like free willied over Marsha. Marsha, yeah. And I was just like, come on. Like, something just doesn't, it didn't feel like yeah. Anitra was fully in it. Like, it, it may be it was because of the performance and the person breaking their leg and she yeah, had to rattled twice. Or something. And then, you know, who knows what it could have been, but I don't know. Something just didn't feel right with Anitra that night. Like, it was yeah. just like she was off, not doing her best. Yeah. And I don't want to tell you how to li live your life, but if I got to the drag race finale with a sprained ankle, I would still perform until the bone came through the skin. And Rose seems like that kind of person. So you're right. It was just, very, it does seem a little. Seems a little odd. I would have put on the Bianca Del Rio orthopedic shoe yes. from Pit Stop, and I would have been like, I'm going to do my number in this. I would have came up with a concept if I had to be in a wheelchair. I, I would still have, like, would have. The wheelchair would have, would have been lit on fire. I would have been like, get me a wheelchair, rhinestone it. Exactly. Sometimes it just feels like there's almost this predetermined, like, okay, yeah. Like, you're going to do this. And when she walked out in the bodysuit with the heart, I was like, okay, that's going to be the reveal eventually. But I was like, this just feels kind of like... yeah. Like, not that reveals are, like, going to make you the winner, but yeah. it's unfortunately part of that. I mean, Sasha had three, and now it's part mm -hmm. of the culture. It's like, if you don't have, a, like, a reveal, you're not winning. I know, but and, and if you do a reveal, please do it like Sasha did it. Because I just always cut back to season 10 with Aquaria, Cameron, and Eureka starting their triple lip sync yeah. with the reveals. But the re it literally, they just had, like, Jiffy Pop coats on. Popcorn bags. They literally yeah. looked, they were just wearing, like, trash bags. Yeah, and then you're like, wow, that's not going to turn, turn into it, anything. And when it did, they just, yeah. like, took it off, and it was a dress underneath. I'm like, that's not a reveal. It needs to be two distinct looks on their own. Like, right. not knowing it's coming. Like, I mean, Sasha. Yeah. I did not expect... It to keep going. When how I it saw went. her doing this, yeah, I was like, like what, "What is she what doing? Is, what is yeah. this like magic magician?" I know pulling out like where are the doves. I know. Oh my god, who got eliminated first? Irene. Irene. She <laughs> threw butterflies. Yes. I was like, She's wow, so shady. triggering. I was I like, know, wow, okay. I know. Well, you had one more chance to be shady. And you I said, know, <laughs> but I'm so happy Sasha won yeah, because no, in my mind incredible. too, I even said to Casey, I was like, it just felt like this was the right time for Sasha to win year. where yeah. Anitra to me is gonna she better kill on all stars kill oh, that's the thing too is that sometimes I feel like it's a predetermined like you're gonna have this like comeback story yes. on all stars and then you'll be you know you'll be a little bit more like well-rounded yes. and then you'll be even more elevated when you come back to all stars totally. so it's like this is where i do feel like they are they're very it's calculative a of like okay let's see like who's going to be better in all stars and who's yeah. going to be here because now all stars you know is coming may 21st i know and so that's already like i love Which that, that this it, new all stars cast is questionable we'll talk about it when it comes out that it is interesting yeah we'll go we'll give the rundown yeah we'll talk yeah. about that in the next yeah. On the next episode, is, we'll give Yeah, you let us quick... know. I don't even think we've talked about drag race. Let no. us know if you're drag race people because yeah. we'll oh, talk I could about go on. I could go on for days about like what the rumors were and now who's officially on. I'm like I know. I know. Good. 
This is the first episode of the rebrand. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're missing out because the set is lit. Thank you so much for listening, watching to another episode of Beautiful and Bothered. I'm Johnny Ross. I'm Kevin Banzow. Follow the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get them. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for weekly video episodes. And we will see you next week with a brand new episode. And remember, you are beautiful. Love you. Bye. See you next week.